news, President Buhari meets with outgoing ministers, thanks them for their service. Ingege pulls out of presidential race, says he wants to focus on his job. And court restrains CBN and INEC from stopping Emir Fili's presidential deed. Well, many thanks for joining us on News Now. I am Falashadi Ogurinde. President Muhammad Ubari has thanked outgoing ministers who are seeking elective offices in 2023 for their services to the nation. In a valedictory session at the council chamber in Abuja on Friday, Buhari said the ministers who resigned from his cabinet to pursue their political ambitions will be replaced without delay. He also admonished other members of the cabinet to be more diligent and committed to the success of the administration. The meeting follows the president's recent directive to all ministers and political appointees contesting for various elective positions to resign from the appointment on or before Monday, May 16, 2022. I hold on memories of incisive and robust discussions during cabinet meetings, rendering of our four months reports during special sessions and presidential retreats. With these and much more, I'm happy to note that a significant number of cabinet members have become sufficiently equipped to aspire to higher elective offices, including the office of the president. This shows the impact of the experience gathered while serving as members of the Federal Executive Council. I have no doubt that if the next president emerges from among former members of this cabinet, like any other aspirant, ample competence and outstanding service delivery would be on display. This will be part of our legacies to Nigerians. Some of the outgoing ministers who spoke to journalists expressed appreciation to the president for the opportunity to serve and in that all knowledge garnered over the years would help in your future ambition. For me, it's been awesome, you know, coming from the private sector to the public sector, I've shared a lot of experiences, especially working under Mr. President, who has been two-time president of this nation, so it shows you that there's a wealth of experience a man has given to us. So I'm grateful to him for the impact he has played in my life. Because we are fighting gender-based violence, and now what we are facing is political, toggery political violence. And I don't see any difference between political uh, violence and gender-based violence. And that must stop. Because I have no reason to say I will come out to contest because already I have a female serving senator, which I was very ready to support. But she has been threatened and intimidated. And that has forced her to back up. And when she backed up, women could pressure me. They bought the form for me. I never. I have not put one dime to purchase any form. But Nigerian women are making a statement. They said it's unacceptable. Minister of Labor and Employment Chris Ngege has announced his withdrawal from the 2023 presidential race. The minister said he took the decision in the interest of the nation and to enable him to concentrate on his job. Ingege was one of the presidential hopefuls of the ruling All Progressives Congress, APC. His withdrawal comes less than two days after President Muhammad Buhari directed all members of his cabinet seeking elective offices in the 2023 elections to resign on or before May the 16th. Well, to discuss the current political atmosphere, especially as 10 ministers resign, Nelson Ekujimi, political affairs analyst, joins me now. Thank you very much for your time. And now it's it's quite interesting uh, what is going on now, especially with the resignation of 10 ministers. Um, of course, the general opinion was that these ministers would rather hold on to their position. Uh, were you anticipating this current uh, development? 
Absolutely, I was, just like uh, other Nigerians. And, you know, immediately the circular and the announcement by the Minister for Information and Culture on Friday, uh, about two days ago, that's Allah Jilai Mohammed. One knew that, you know, uh, with that uh, ultimatum, that the wheat will be separated from the shaft. And the, the withdrawal of uh, Senator Ngigi from the race is not unexpected. One expects that, you know, as we go on, uh, some other ministers or some other persons who have, you know, signified intention will, you know, you know will have weighed their chances and they will do the needful in withdrawing. Because before now, the way and manner people have been rushing to obtain the uh, 100 million naira expression of interest from made the contest to look like a bazaar. But you know, with these current developments of uh, uh, civil serv uh, public servants, uh, our political appointees that have been given the directive to resign between now and uh, the 16th of May uh, 2022, one expects that even those that have been, that the evaluative service has been conducted for today, might, you know, make a U-turn. Now, ahead of the APC primaries, how competitive do you think the race would be? Will the party eventually opt for consensus candidates? Come again. Now, I was asking uh, that uh, with the resignation of these ministers and they officially joining uh, the, the presidential race uh, towards um, 2023, uh, do you see the race, especially for the APC, becoming more competitive? And do you think the party would eventually... No, absolutely. The, you know, the candidates? contest will be decided by the uh, delegates of the party. And maybe I think why some of them have withdrawn is for... have uh, resigned, you know, in deference to the uh, directive of Mr. President and the Federal Executive Council, it's for them to be able to concentrate, uh, you know, in actualizing their ambition, you know, that they want to, you know, uh, uh, they want to be. And, you know, by resigning from the Federal Executive Cabinet, as well as the uh, government ministries, department, departments and agencies, it will give them uh, time to concentrate on their aspirations and not distract governance, you know, from its uh, objective of meeting the yearnings and aspirations of the people. So one expects that the APC primaries will be uh, one between the contenders and the pretenders. But, you know, don't forget, we live in a very uh, funny climate where when election time comes, on the eve of election, you see uh, aspirants or you see contenders, you know, coming up and, you know, throwing in the towel that, you know, with their lining behind candidate A or B. So I don't want to expect that you know, all the persons that have bought the forms or who have a signified intention, that on the D day, they'll be present on the field of play. Some of, the, some of them will fall by the wayside, just like the Minister for Labor and Productivity. Well, indeed, uh, Nelson Ekujimi, political affairs analyst, thank you very much for your contribution. Justice Daniel Maido of the Delta State High Court, Kuala Division, has ordered the board of the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, and the Independent National Electric Commission, INEC, to restrain from hindering Godwin Imefile from running for the office of the president. The judge granted the other following an ex parte motion filed by one Unqua Augustine Edigor against the board of CBN and INEC, seeking an order to restrain the defendants. The court, which was jurisdiction over Agbo Kuala in Delta State, held that the application seeking to restrain INEC and CBN from Emir Phyllis' presidential ambition had merit. The case has since been adjourned to May 25. The National Security Advisor, Babagana Mongunu, has advised political parties in the country to play by the rules ahead of the governorship elections in Ikiti and Ocean States. Mongunu made the appeal at the quarterly meeting of the Inter-Agency Consultative Committee on Election Security, organized by the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, in Abuja. Represented by Sanusi Galadima of the Office of the National Security Advisor, the NSA disclosed that heads of security and law enforcement agencies have been mandated to monitor closely political actors planning to sub subvert the electoral process of the elections. On his part, the chairman of the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, Mahmoud Yakubu, who expressed worry over the current security situation in the country, taxed the security agencies across the country to tackle insecurity within nine months ahead of the 2023 general elections. The NSA has noted with utmost concern the growing uncertainty heralding the conduct of party primaries for 2023 elections. 
This is in addition to the unabated spate of violence that threatened the upcoming upcycle gubernatorial elections in HT and Oshun states. Accordingly, head of security and law enforcement agencies have been taxed to step up close monitoring and profiling of political actors, no matter highly placed, who exhibit tendencies that subvert the electoral process. Even as talks and other sponsors will equally be trailed for possible arrest and prosecution. The Commission and security agencies have our work clearly um, cut out. The general security situation in the country and its impact on the electoral process is a source of concern to the Commission. However, we are confident that with nine months to the 2023 general election, there is enough time to respond to the security challenges and secure the nation for elections to take place nationwide. The timetable for the election has been released. Let us not wait until a few weeks to the election before we realize that time is not on our side and begin to seek for extension of timelines. The time to act is now. Ahead of the 2023 general elections, the Social Democratic Party, SDP, has ruled out conditions to politicians who have shown interest to run for elective offices under the platform of the party. The acting national chairman, uh, Shupo Shonibare, at a press briefing in Abuja, said the party would not be used as an opportunistic uh, vehicle. Shonibare further stressed that the party would not welcome anyone that has a case pending in court or anyone that has been convicted, even if the person is now appealing that conviction. In instances where we've seen great injustice to an individual, who we feel that the individual is not coming to join us with the baggage. Yes, that individual will be welcome to our party. But we wouldn't welcome anyone who we feel that has uh, a case pending in court. We wouldn't welcome anyone who we feel that has been convicted, even if the person is actually now appealing against that conviction. So we will try to ensure that those who we welcome to our party are men and women of integrity. And yes, SDP will be succor for those who have been wrongly dealt with in the political parties, provided those people who are coming themselves have displayed integrity and honor in the way and manner they themselves have conducted themselves in government. And still in politics, the Bono Rebirth Movement, BRM, has threatened to ostracize any Idoma indigene that succumbs to playing second fiddle in the next governorship election in Bono State. Addressing newsmen at a press briefing in Joss, a group of elders from Southern Bono Senatorial Constituency appealed to the political stake stakeholders in the state to, re to retain the governorship seat to Bono South Senatorial Zone come 2023. A correspondent, Mary Kano, tells us more in this report. These are elders and members of the Benue Rebirth Movement from the Southern Senatorial Zone of Benue State. They have gathered at the Nigerian Union of Journalist Secretariat's Plateau State Chapter to press home their demands for the emergence of a governor based on an earlier agreement for rotation among the three senatorial districts in the state, expressing bitterness over the continued marginalization of the Idoma people in Benue State. Leader of the movement, Geoffrey Ejiga, who said he was part of a 1998 agreement on the zoning of the governorship seat among the three zones of the state, called on stakeholders to help prevent an impending crisis which may erupt in the state. Everybody in Benue should be given equal opportunity for anything. That Idoma should have opportunity to be governor. The team of Zone A should have opportunity to be governor. Zone B should be also a governor. Not when they are about seven or eight, they become governors and they say we cannot be. So my prayer is that this should be corrected. It'll be corrected so that we Idoma people 
will be happy to be part of Benway. Erin has grievances. says the group coordinator Monday Morgan while calling for fairness in the state dealings demanded for the zoning of an ex-governor of Benway State to the southern senatorial district of the state. Zone A and B, which is majorly chief uh, of uh, uh, ethnic background, have been rotating among themselves. But when the time comes to switch to Zone C, different arithmetics will emerge. And this arithmetical emergence creates difficulty for the teaming youth in Zone C to understand. And I think that my group, after the first generation and second generation, in my own generation, if we fail to agitate, it is a failure of my own generation that we have not been able to protect the future of our children. The Idoma elders have unanimously agreed that come 2023, an Idoma indigen who accepts a deputy governorship position will be declared persona non grata. Mary Kanu, TV360, Nigeria. We'll take a break here, but still to come, Nigerian spending on household consumption rises to 108 trillion naira. Details of this story and more rights after this break. Welcome back. Now here is a recap of some of our top stories tonight. President Mohamed Barrios thanked outgoing ministers who are seeking elective offices in 2023 for their services to the nation. In a valedictory session at the council chamber in Abuja on Friday, Wari said the ministers who resigned from his cabinet to pursue their political ambitions will be replaced without delay. What we told you that Minister of Labour and Employment, Chris Igigi, has announced his withdrawal from the 2023 presidential race. The minister said he took the decision in the interest of the nation and to enable him to concentrate on his job. Ingege was one of the presidential hopefuls of the ruling All Progressives Congress, APC. Well, in case you miss any of our news bulletin, for more updates, do log on to our website on wwwtv 360 nigeriacom You can also follow us on our social media platforms on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube and Google Plus at tv 360 Nigeria. On Facebook, we are TV360 Online. North Korea has confirmed its first death from COVID-19. According to local media, six people died after suffering a fever with one testing positive for the Omicron variant. And in that, 187,000 persons out of the tens of thousands were experiencing fever symptoms were being isolated and treated. Meanwhile, experts believe the virus has been present in the country for some time, but the authorities only announced the first cases on Thursday. I will take a breather here and return with more stories and business to stay with us. Opinions are free, facts are sacred, the truth is universal. How, in practical terms, can we, for instance, de-escalate the tension? President must see himself as the president of the Federal Republic. We know where the enemy is. Three places. Um, the Lake Chad basin, the border area between Nigeria and Cameroon, and then the Sambisa forest. On DG 360, we give you a complete dose of everything. Opinion, facts, and undiluted truths. I hardly believe what politicians say in this uh, part of the world. A new Nigeria is possible, a future is possible. We delve into the issues, dissect it so that you can understand it. 
use it to take action. I don't think there's any need for go any governor to look for grant for ranching. DG360, dissecting the issues. In the last three years, we have built a multi-purpose center, which is the envy of all in our constituency. And I can tell you that the people who are living there are already enjoying it. Guy, do you think what this man just said is true? See, I seriously doubt. I'm sure it's one of those that are silly lies. And wait, do you know there's a way to find out if these things he's saying is true or not? Ah. This is the construct app. It gives people like us a sure way to track implementation of constituency projects. It gives valid and verified information on location of projects, amounts allocated, amounts funded, the level of job done, and even the profiles of concerned legislators. You and I can post directly on this app. Are you serious? This is the go-to app if you want to know how our commonwealth is being expended by the government. Wow. Let's even see if what this man said is true. Show me. The Construct app is developed by other people in Nigeria with support from USAID and is available on both Google Play Store and Apple Store. Eh, yeah. and it's true. <laughs> of course, I told you. Welcome back. Mary Kanu is on standby for more stories and business. Over to you, Mary. Well, thank you, Folashade. Welcome to Business News. The Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC, has released new rules for digital assets as part of its efforts to regulate virtual assets such as bitcoins and NFTs. This is contained in a recently released document by the Commission, essentially legalizing digital assets such as cryptocurrencies in Nigeria. According to the Commission, digital asset players will now include virtual asset service providers and assets exchange, among others. The new rules Rules apply to all platforms that support the trading, exchange and transfer of virtual assets. The National Bureau of Statistics, NBS, has revealed that Nigerian residents spent 108.4 trillion naira on household consumption in 2021 in nominal terms. The figure is higher than the 97.7 trillion naira recorded in 2020, showing an increase of 11 percent amid double-digit inflation. According to the NBS report, household consumption accounted for the biggest share of the expenditure gross domestic products. We'll take a break and return with Stock Market Review to stay with us. For the third time in less than one month, the NGX has hit another milestone as the all-share index hits the 53,000 mark. This means investors are still having a blast as the NGX has continued its bullish run with the market trading at 0.34%. Now, today's positive performance is attributed largely to gains in Nigeria flour mills and magnicals as well as 29 of the gainers. Now, despite the gains, the market witnessed a pullback with volume, value and deals, recording declines compared with the previous trading session. So far, the market has maintained a positive trend, hitting new highs and recording new fits. Let's hope the trend continues in the coming week. Let's now turn our attention to some selected global stocks. Now, after a punishing week of losses across major indexes in the US, UK and Asia, the stocks are trading higher today, although investors are still confronting issues not seen in decades as inflation continues to hover near a four decade high and that's why we can see that the FTSE is currently trading up at 2.55 percent Dow Jones is also trading up at 1.48 percent and Asia's Nikkei is currently trading up at 2.64 percent well that's the stock market review for Lashadi back to you well, many thanks, Mary. On the foreign scene, the president of Ukraine, Volodymyr Zelensky, has announced his readiness for negotiations with Russian President Vladimir Putin, adding that the negotiations will have to take place without Putin's intermediaries and must be on the terms of dialogue and not ultimatums. According to the president, the very issue of negotiations with Putin is becoming more complicated by the day, explaining that the Ukrainian society itself is not positive about the negotiations between him and the president of Russia. 
Speaking of peace, Zelensky said Russia should show respect for the sovereignty and territorial integrity of Ukraine traditions and people, language, society and independence. But up next is Entertainment Report on News Now. Rising music act Chukuma Ekweani, popularly known as CK, has emerged 2022 Times Next Generation Leader, the only Nigerian to make the list. The Times Next Generation Leader's list recognizes young people from across field and around the globe who are working to build a better world. Announcing CK's emergence on their official website on Thursday, Times described the singer as one of the most successful African recording artists ever on a global scale. Late last year, CK garnered over 15 billion streams on TikTok after his 2019 single Love One Ting Ting went viral on the platform, capturing the ear and heart of millions of listeners around the world. The singer is expected to release his debut album later this year. One of Nigeria's finest actors, Benga Richards, has been snatched by the cold hands of death on Thursday, May 12. According to several reports, Richards, who was a force to reckon with in the early days of Nollywood, battled with acute diabetes and high blood pressure, which kept him in and out of hospital until he died. A few years ago, friends of the movie star solicited for funds to manage his ailing health. Richards' first appearance as an actor was to represent Nigeria with Hubert Ogunde at the Second World Black and African Festival of African Culture Festac in 1977. The late actor was married to Nollywood actress Florence Richards before they parted ways in 2019. May his soul rest in peace. And that's all on the entertainment segment of News Now. Away from entertainment and out of sports, EA Sports has unveiled nominees for the 2021-2022 Premier League Player of the Season Award on Friday. And surprising exclusions were Manchester United's Cristiano Ronaldo and Liverpool's forward Sadio Mane. Ronaldo will won the Premier League Player of the Month for April and Mane, a key man in Liverpool's quadruple chase and side, did not make the courts in the list. The five-time Ballon d'Or winner has been a shining light in United's dismal season with 18 goals in 30 league matches. He has also twice been named as a Premier League's Player of the Month. And that's the size of our news bulletin. Many thanks for watching. I am Fulashadi. Ogurinde. Bye for now. Thank you.